Hey everybody, you may have noticed that we've been uploading modular characters lately, like these casual outfits and these elves. And I'm sitting here making the next pack in a program called Marvelous Designer. This is going to be a military uniform. And I thought I'd show you guys a little bit about how Marvelous Designer works, just in case you guys ever want to try to make your own outfits for these characters. If you've never heard of Marvelous Designer, it's a program specifically for making clothing or other fabric objects. So I'm going to start with a fresh new scene here. When you open the program, you'll see one of the default mannequins. I'm actually using one of our modular characters, but it will work exactly the same. So don't worry if the character you have on screen is a little different. You can upload your own character if you want to, or you can download one of our modular characters and use the body from it to follow along exactly with what I'm doing if you want to. So I think we're going to make something really basic, like a t-shirt and jeans or maybe shorts. But first, I want to give you a quick tour of the interface. So on the left side, we have our 3D window where we can see the resulting geometry, the resulting outfit. And on the right is our 2D pattern window where we actually draw the patterns in 2D space and then stitch them together. Up here at the top, we have some options. This button right here is how we create our initial shapes. Let's just create a rectangle really quick and I can show you how it all works. So I'm just gonna drag a rectangle on the canvas like this and you can see a rectangle appears in 2D space but also in 3D space. If you click on it in 3D space, you can rotate it and position it into place. And then you can either press spacebar or click on this top left button, this little down arrow, and that's how you activate the simulation. Now, while the arrow is active and it's simulating, you can actually use the mouse to position the cloth how you want it. It's actually pretty fun to play with. You can kind of fold it and style it how you like. So maybe he's got this little blanket sort of thrown over his shoulder like this. Amazing, we made a ghost. Now you can press undo and it will go back to how it was before you pressed play. Now let me show you how a couple of the other important tools work. The button right next to the one we used right here is how we create internal shapes inside of an existing shape. So if I click on this, I can create, let's say, an internal ellipse. So I can drag a little circle inside of this shape and it created a little circle or an ellipse inside of my fabric pattern. Now I'm going to click on my edit pattern, the hotkey for it is Z, and I can right click on this yellow circle and I can say convert to whole and it will cut it out and now we've got sort of a poncho. And if I press space to simulate, it falls around his neck. It's uh, rotated around so the point is in the front and we've actually made a pretty cool little poncho. Now if the neck hole is too big, I can click on this uh, transform pattern and click on the hole and I can actually scale it right here. It's kind of like working in Illustrator or other vector programs if you've ever used one. And notice that it's updating in real time over in the 3D window. Now it does start to get kind of tangled up as you edit, but if you press spacebar, it will re-simulate and re-shuffle and make it look natural. Okay, so that's how we create shapes, but how do we stitch things together? So I'm going to delete this and let's create a fresh new square. And I'm going to hit Control c for copy and Control v for paste. And now I've got two squares. If I press play to simulate, they both just kind of fall. Let's undo that and let's actually quickly position it so it lands on top of them. Maybe it'll stay in the air longer. And let's say I want to sew these two edges together. The tool for that is right here on the top bar. And the most basic way to sew is called segment sewing. The hotkey is N. The way this works is I click on the edge that I want to start the sewing and then I click where I wanted to sew to. And you'll notice there are these colored lines showing which edges were sewn together. And if I press play, they zip together and become one piece. Now there's a couple things you need to take note of, be very careful about. If I undo, you may have noticed when you roll over the edge when you're sewing that there's this little notch, and that's to indicate the direction of the sewing. So if I click here, notice the notch was on the left, and then if I click on this edge over here so that the notch is on the right, what we've done is we've sewn this corner to the opposite corner, and we're going to get it twisted up when we press play to simulate. So pay close attention to the way the lines are going and which side the notches are on. So you can actually sew in 3D space as well. You don't have to sew in the 2D window if you don't want to. And sometimes it is more visually clear what's going on if you do it over here. So I can actually click on this edge here in 3D space and I click on that one. And it's very clear which edges I've sewn together and that they've sewn together in the right direction. Now, what do you do if you have two pieces that are different sizes and you want to sew them together? Well, you can actually sew them together with segment sewing if you want to. And what's going to happen is this entire edge is going to be sewn to this shorter edge and it will bunch up kind of like poofy renaissance sleeves. So now you can see that it's bunched up. So that's how you create this sort of, I guess, pleated look maybe, those poofy sleeves. But let's say I don't want that to happen. Let's say I want to sew this entire edge to just a section of this longer edge. Well, instead of using segment sewing, I'm going to use free sewing. 
And the way this works is you click on the vert or wherever you want it to start, and then you drag it as long as you want it to go. It's up to you. And then over here on this edge, I'll click where I want to start. And you'll notice a little dot appears that shows you exactly how long the other edge is. So I can click that. And now this edge is sewn to just a section that's the same length of this longer edge, like that. Now you don't have to do that. You can sew a smaller section if you want to, like let's say right here in the middle, and then we'll get that same bunched up effect like this. So it's all totally up to you what you wanna do. So I think we actually know enough to make a basic t-shirt. Let me show you how that's done. And I'll highlight new tools as we go along. So the most important thing to do first, especially if you don't know how to actually make clothes in real life, is to find references of patterns. If you've never created clothing from scratch before, or costume from scratch before, then the patterns for even basic clothing probably don't look the way you expect, like a pair of jeans or a t-shirt. So make sure you look at reference. Okay, we're gonna make a basic t-shirt first. The way that we were creating our shapes before was with this rectangle tool, but I'm gonna use the polygon tool so we can draw a custom shape. So I'll start right here in the center. One thing you wanna do is give it a lot of extra room. So if I'm gonna trace kind of the outline of his torso here, give it some extra room because you have to account for the depth of the shoulder in 3D space as well. So I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna go outward from his silhouette and I'll kind of draw a little tank top first. So I'll click here in the armpit for the end of the sleeve opening and then we'll go do the hem of the shirt and then I'm gonna close off the shape like this. Now here's what's really cool. I'm gonna click on transform pattern and select it. And if you hit control D, it'll duplicate and mirror it and it'll keep them linked. So the symmetry will automatically be activated, which is really cool. So if I grab say this, this point here, this vertex, I can move it and you can see it moves symmetrically on the other side as well. Okay, so I'm actually gonna just kind of straighten that out. We'll make it a little more fitted later. So I actually want the neckline to be more curved and then the same thing with the armpit. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna search for edit curvature. The hotkey is C and I can click and drag this line and sort of bend it into a curve like that. And let's do the same thing for this armpit line. And then I can switch back to my edit pattern tool. The hotkey is Z and maybe I can adjust this a little bit so it looks a little bit more like my reference. Notice that now that we've curved this line, we have these little bezier handles like Illustrator. So if you're familiar with how that works, how the pen tool works in Illustrator, this should be very familiar to you. Now let's duplicate these for the back panel. So I'll grab this one right here and instead of hitting Control D to duplicate, I'm actually just gonna hit copy and paste. So Control C, Control V, and I'll put it over here to the side. And then this one, I'm gonna hit Control D to duplicate. So I did that so that these two stay linked and then the two back panels will stay linked symmetrically. Um, let's kind of wrangle these together. It looks like in 3D space they got a little separated. So I'll just bring this back together. So just like in real life, how your t-shirt can be inside out, the same thing can happen here in 3D in Marvelous Designer. So we want to pay attention to what we're doing. When we move this to the back of the model, we don't want to just move it like this. We want to actually flip it so that it's facing inward, just like the t-shirt would be. And you can see that the inside actually has a different color, so it makes it really easy and you wanna position it pretty close to where it's going to be when it stitches together. So I'm looking again at my reference and I want to modify the back of the neckline a little bit to make it fit. Okay, and now we can actually start sewing. So I need to sew this part together here and then the part under his armpit and then of course the front I need to close it up and the back in the middle I need to close that up too. So I'm gonna grab my segment sewing tool, the hotkey is N. I've been using Marvelous Designer since before the 3D window became a thing, so I'm used to sewing in the 2D window, but remember that you can click in the 3D window to do the same thing I'm doing. So I sewed these two edges up here, and then I'll sew these two edges up here, and I'm just checking the 3D window to make sure it looks right, and it does. And notice that you don't have to worry about the other side because we have symmetry working, so it's automatically gonna sew up the other side. Now here in the middle, I'm going to click and sew together the front, and then the same thing on the back. Remember that before it can stitch together, it's actually going to fall a little bit due to gravity. So I usually position it up a little bit higher than it needs to be so that it falls into place. Okay, looking pretty good. So it looks roughly like a little sleeveless t-shirt, but the fit is a little bit weird. I think the back of the neckline is a little bit too wide. And then we can also change the fit through the torso in a little bit here. Um, first, let me fix this neckline. I'm going to use the edit pattern tool to bring these together. And this is kind of a crazy curve, so let's just sort of make that less extreme. Looking pretty good. Don't forget that you can move this around on his body if it's not quite straight. Looks like the front of his neckline is also a little bit extreme. There we go. So maybe I wanted to taper as it goes down to be more of a fitted t-shirt. Um, here's a trick that I do. So if I grab this point and move it inward, notice it does the same thing here, but it doesn't do the same thing on the back. And another thing to keep in mind is by moving this point, but not the bottom corner on this back pattern, we've actually changed the length of these edges. 
So now they don't quite match. They're pretty close, so it's not gonna be too much of a problem, but if you're not paying attention and you're making a lot of adjustments, you can get to a point where this edge is a very different length from the edge it's sewn to, and then you get that bunched up look that we talked about earlier. So I try to be very conscious of how I'm changing the length of edges after they're sewn together. Here's a little trick I like to do to make sure the edges stay the same length. I'm gonna click the bottom right corner of the front patterns, and I'm also gonna click the bottom right corner of the back patterns. And I do that so that as I move this point here to the left to taper it, it's also moving this point to the left. And so you end up tapering both patterns at the same time, and these vertical edges remain the same length. Now you don't need to taper it very much. Um, that's one thing you'll learn as you mess around with this program is small adjustments go a long way. Okay, now we need some sleeves. So what I'm gonna do is take a look at my pattern and the sleeve pattern is a lot different from what you might expect. You might've expected that it's just a tube, but if you take a look at our reference pattern, it's basically a little five-sided shape, like a little house with a rounded roof. So I'm gonna start by creating just a five-sided shape, like a Monopoly house, not really worrying too much about the length of things. You can always adjust it in a little bit here. And let's move this point over so it's more symmetrical. Okay, and then I wanna create that swoopy shape. So I'm gonna grab my edit curvature and just kind of bring this up like that. And then I'll press Z to edit the pattern and I'll bring this bezier handle down so we get this S curve, trying to mimic my reference. So we have the basic shape, but the proportions are not correct. So how do we know how long these edges should be? Well, they're gonna sew to this opening here. So I'm just gonna click on this edge and I can see that this edge is 31.76 units long. This one is only 20.7 units long, so let's Make this much longer. Maybe I'll bring this up. So I'm look, getting to about 31. Okay, so this edge is gonna to sew to this edge. This edge is going to sew to this edge. And then actually these two edges here are gonna to sew to each other. So I wanna make sure that they are roughly the same length too. Now you don't have to do the exact same numbers as me as long as your pattern matches itself. Okay, so I'm gonna position this pattern here, rotate it. This is gonna go kind of on his shoulder. Okay, and then I'll hit Control D to duplicate and bring it over here. Okay, so I'm gonna use my segment sewing and I'm gonna sew from this edge here to here and then this edge here goes to that one. Notice that it happens the same thing on the other side so we don't have to worry about it. I'm gonna move this a little bit closer to his body so that it falls around his arm before it sews closed. And let's press spacebar, let it settle, looking good, okay. So now that it's draped around his arm, we can actually sew together this under edge. So I'll click here and sew it to there. I'll press play. It worked. Now it doesn't really look good because the t-shirt is fitted, but the sleeves are kind of baggy. <laughs> so we can try to tighten these up a little bit. Maybe I'll narrow the sleeves down, shorten the sleeves. I think our problem is that the opening of the sleeves is a little bit big. See how low this opening is? It should be kind of more up in the armpit. So I'm gonna bring these points up. But before I do that, remember what I said earlier, as I bring these up, it's actually shortening this edge that this sleeve is sewn to. And so here's a little trick. I'm gonna grab this, and I'm actually gonna rotate it this way so that when I move this point up, I can move this point up as well, and hopefully it stays roughly the same length. Let's also do it on the back, and I'll move this up. Now, unfortunately, we need to actually bring this one down, so we couldn't do it at the same time, but let's go ahead and do that now. And you can see the pattern sort of exploded, but if we press spacebar, it comes back together and now it's fitted a little bit better to his body. We get this weird spike here in the collar and that's because these points here are a little bit too high. So let's go ahead and bring those down. There we go, starting to look a lot better. And sometimes it's not that the pattern is wrong, sometimes it's just sitting on his body awkwardly. So don't forget that you can move this around with your mouse. So it looks like it's kind of just riding up on his neck a little bit. So I'll just pull this down, bring it up in the back. It's actually a pretty good looking t-shirt. It was just sitting on him weird. Okay, cool. So that's how we do a basic t-shirt. So now I'm gonna make a pair of pants and I want to hide this t-shirt so that I can see what I'm doing with the waistline of the pants. It's very easy to do. Let's just select all of our patterns again. And then in the 3D view, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say deactivate pattern and sewing. And now it's gonna stay there, but it's transparent and we can see what we're doing underneath. And it's also not going to simulate when we press spacebar and it won't interfere with our jeans. And now we're gonna create a pair of pants. So let's start with the polygon tool again. Hot key is H. And I'm gonna click right about here, not the center line this time, but I'm gonna click right about here and go out like this. And we'll make shorts first. It's much easier to create shorts and then stretch the leg later than it is to just draw a perfect pair of jeans. So I'll go down to about here and then we'll do the leg opening. And then kind of the inseam of the pants is drawn like this. So we need this little five-sided shape, this little point coming inward to create the fabric that goes underneath. Let's go to edit curvature, hot key is C. 
And just like I did with the t-shirt, I'm gonna bend this into that shape like that. Let me just move some points around really quick. Okay, perfect. Let's duplicate this just like we did with the t-shirt pattern. Control D and it's gonna flip it and it's gonna keep symmetry active. And then just like we did for the back of the t-shirt, let's grab this pattern on the right and instead of duplicating, I'm gonna copy and paste. So Control C for copy, Control V for paste. Now I've got the back side. I'm gonna hit Control D for duplicate and then I will flip them around so that they're facing the right way and move it behind him like that. Okay, so I'm gonna grab this and just make it look a little bit more like the pattern reference that I have. These are gonna look like boxer briefs <laughs> at first. All right, so now we're gonna use the sewing tool, segment sewing, the hotkey is N, and I'll sew these edges up here. Don't forget that you can sew in 3D space if you're more comfortable with that. So I sewed up the side. Now we need to sew up the inside of the leg. And then of course we need to sew the front closed and the back. Okay, let's press play. And it looks like I need to bring it closer to his body so it doesn't fall. And we'll hit spacebar. All right, cool. So it looks like the waistline is a little bit low. So I'm gonna grab my top edges of my pattern and just bring it up to give him a much more realistic waistline. It's also a little bit tight, so we can give him some more room by grabbing this edge here, the outside right edges, and just kind of bring them like this to scale the pattern wider. There we go. Now it fits a little bit better. So now we're ready to try to make the pants longer, unless you want shorts and then you're done. So let's even out the opening here. I'm just gonna bring these down to make it a little bit more straight. And now I can grab this edge and I don't recommend you bring it all the way down to the ankle in one go because it can do weird things like this. <laughs> so go little by little, let's bring it down and press simulate and then I'll bring it down a little bit more and then simulate again. If it starts poking through the leg like this, you can actually grab it and just sort of pull it out like that. Let's bring it down more. Okay, so now he's got kind of Jinkos on, you know, you guys remember the 90s. But let's make these a little bit more fitted. Maybe I'll give him some fitted skinny jeans like that. So last thing before we call it quits on this first intro video, you probably want to learn how to export this to your other software so that you can put it into your animations or texture it or something like that. So here's how you export it to your 3D programs. What you want to do is highlight all of your patterns and then go file, export, and you can do an OBJ or an FBX. I'm gonna do OBJ selected and I'll name this demo outfit. And now we have our export options. It's going to combine them into a single object. You can do multiple objects if you want to. And it's gonna be thick, which means it's going to extrude the surface to actually have a little bit of thickness. It's very important to pay attention to this because sometimes you want that and sometimes you don't. Maybe for a video game or something where you only want single sided surfaces or fewer polygons, you might want to do thin. There's also the option here for weld and unweld. So if you choose unweld, these patterns are going to be separate objects, not just the different garments, but each panel is going to be a separate object. If I choose weld, it will actually stitch up those vertices in the middle. I'll press OK. So here it is in Maya. Another cool thing about this is it's already UV mapped. If you think about it, those 2D patterns that we drew, those make a great UV map. So it's already done. Just make sure it's laid out in the square and you've got a fully UV mapped outfit. That should be enough to get you guys started if you want to start making your own garments for these characters. I'm going to come back in another video and I'm going to show you how to make something more advanced like a puffy jacket or something just a little more complex than jeans and a t-shirt. And then I'll also show you guys how you can use Marvelous Designer to simulate clothing for your animations. In the meantime though, if you create anything cool with this program for these characters, be sure to share it with us on Discord or tag us on Instagram with it. Alright, later creators!